everyone, Caleb Rondell here, and this is your video for Acts chapter 19. Dressed a little, little more casual for this video. Hope that's okay for you. So Acts chapter 19 all takes place in Ephesus. Now, other places get mentioned in the chapter, Corinth, Macedonia. Paul even talks about going to Rome. But everything in 19 takes place in Ephesus. Paul is continuing his journey that started back in chapter 18, verse 22. In fact, if you recall that journey, Paul was just in Ephesus, textual-wise, in 18, 19 through 22. Now, obviously, a lot of time goes by because Paul goes on this journey, goes to Jerusalem, then heads back north. And so a lot of time is going by here in this part of Acts. And so it could seem, if you were just reading it straight through, Oh, he's in Ephesus. He goes somewhere else. Oh, he's right back in Ephesus. But we're talking months, years, whatnot going by. All right. So in Ephesus, in verses 1 through 7 of chapter 19, there is this great thing about this two baptisms issue that we have seen come up before in Acts. And when Paul gets to Ephesus, he meets a group of believers, part of the church, and he asks them, you know, what was your baptism like? And they say, well, we just know John's baptism. And that baptism is with water, and it's about repentance and the forgiveness of your sins, like John the Baptist does in the Gospels. And Paul's like, well, what about being baptized with the Holy Spirit? And they're like, Holy Spirit, what? Never heard of it. And so... Paul lays hands on them. They receive the Holy Spirit. Now, here's one way to think about all this two baptisms, Holy Spirit thing in the book of Acts. One way is that to look at John's baptism, the baptism of water and forgiveness, is about a baptism of receiving passively what God has already done. In our Methodist flavor of the church, we believe that baptism is a sign of God's grace that is already present. It's not about you doing or believing anything, that baptism is a sign that God has a community for you in the church and that God's grace is already present for you. Baptism is just an outward ritual or sign that we recognize that grace that's already there and welcome someone into the community of the church. So it's a passive thing. Baptism of the Holy Spirit can be thought of as an active thing, whereas you receive God's grace in that baptism of water, and then with the Holy Spirit, you then become an active participant in what God is doing. And you see this in Acts. If you remember back to Acts 1 and 2, the disciples were just hanging out, not really doing a whole lot. And then they received their baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then all the things flow from that, the actions, the stories, the journeys, um, it all flows from that. And so one way you can look at this is we receive God's grace and then we become active participants in what God is doing in the world. So that's one way to read into uh, what Paul is getting at here saying, like, oh, like this isn't just about, you know, you guys receiving grace and repentance. It's also about you doing the things that God has called you to do and being a part of what's going on. Uh, that faith is not a passive thing. Faith is an active thing. All right. In verses 8 through 10, we have the same old story that's kind of getting repetitive at this point of Paul getting a negative response in a synagogue. And then they take uh, Paul takes his preaching and his followers out of the synagogue, and they go to this civic place the Lecture Hall of Tyrannus. Great name, by the way, especially for all y'all into Star Wars. That name sounds familiar. Or if you just know classical history, Tyrannus. Anyway, two years go by in Ephesus. In verses 11 through 20, we hear what Paul is doing during those two years, uh, and we hear about a particular episode that comes from that. So Paul is doing miracles, and healings are happening through him. There's the dramatic picture that, you know, just stuff he touches is healing people and people are all excited about that. And then we hear about how others want to be in on this. And we've seen this before in Acts when people uh, had heard that Peter and the disciples have been doing healings, that they want to in on that. You recall an episode where someone even wanted to buy that power and it was like, that's not how any of this works. Same sort of thing here. Uh, in particular, we hear about the sons of Skeva 
who is a high priest of all things, uh, start using Jesus's name. And there's this kind of hilarious and weird and just strange episode where a spirit says, I know Jesus and I know Paul, I know those names, but who are you losers? And then they get tossed out of the house naked and afraid, <laughs> just like weird stuff happening. And then after that episode, Ephesus is so worked up that, you know, there's this new thing involving Jesus and all these things are happening that people then have a public book burning uh, with all their different spiritual um, and religious and, you know, ritual magic materials. Uh, not saying public book burnings are usually not good. Like that's usually a sign that things may be taking a weird turn when people are in the streets burning stuff. And that's kind of what happens here. Now, it gives the mention that people are wound up and they destroy a huge fortune, 50,000 silver coins of stuff. Okay. Now, this is going on. And then Paul in 21 and 22 makes plans to leave Ephesus. He might have even been feeling like, okay, things are getting a little out of control here. I might need to head somewhere else. It doesn't say that, but it kind of has given off that vibe. And he says, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to make my way back to Jerusalem. And then I think I need to head to Rome. And it's important to note that Paul says that because that is important later on for things that happen uh, because he eventually does head in that direction to Rome. But that's for chapters ahead. And so Paul has plans to leave Ephesus and go on another journey. And he sends Timothy and Erastus ahead of him on that to Macedonia. Now, chapter 19 concludes with a riot in Ephesus, and that's found in verses 23 through 41. This guy named Demetrius organizes the idol industry, meaning the industry organized around making and selling and caring for uh, physical idols, articles of worship, uh, against Paul, recognizing that this guy and this new Jesus movement is a threat to our livelihood. Now, it's this is all about the goddess Artemis. Now, there was a great temple to Artemis in Ephesus for centuries up until maybe the 300 or 400s of this era, I guess. Um, and so very much a thing when Paul is there. And this temple was so great and renowned, it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, along with the gardens of Babylon and the pyramids and the Colossus of Rhodes and all that. There was the great temple of Artemis in Ephesus that made this great list of like, hey, here's cool things people have done. Y'all should go see them. Only ones left are the pyramids, but I digress. So Artemis is part of the Greek pantheon, and she is the goddess of the hunt, along with a lot of other things, like all uh, kind of gods in groups of gods, she had a very wide portfolio, but the main thing is the hunt and animals. Artemis is also the twin sister of the sun god Apollo. In the Roman pantheon, Artemis is known as Diana. Okay, now, so there's this great temple there, and as we know, temples usually are lucrative, and this one especially so. And so Demetrius gets other people together and says, hey, like, our livelihood is threatened. Like, this has made us and our city wealthy, and this Paul guy is about to wreck this whole thing. Now, he says this, and also in verse 27, we get that Demetrius is also worried about Artemis herself, the goddess, that, like, you know, this is going to be bad for her. And I'll tell you this, if you ever find yourself worried about a deity you worship, get a better deity. Uh, because if you're worried about your God, then that probably is not the God you should be worshiping. Um, because gods don't have anything to worry about. God has nothing to worry about. So if you ever find yourself concerned uh, that the deity you worship, that the God you worship uh, is threatened by something, you are probably worshiping a wrong God. You have probably constructed or found an idol for yourself. Because uh, God doesn't need your worry. God has things handled. If not, then that's not God. Okay, just a little side note, little preachy note on this thing about Artemis and Ephesus and the temple and the riot and everything. So in verse 29, the riot begins. And it's interesting in verse 32, and this is how we are as humans when we gather in groups and get worked up and how riots and crowds and everything happens. 
uh, in verse 32, it says the crowd doesn't even know what's going on. Like it obviously started with people, you know, wanting to protect Artemis and get rid of Paul and all that. But then just people added to it because there was energy and noise and commotion in the streets. And, you know, people love a good commotion and they don't even know what it's about. And we still do that as humans. We get all worked up about things and we don't even really know what the original thing to get worked up about is. We just want to be in on it. We don't want to let be left out. We got that FOMO, as the kids say. We have the fear of missing out. Okay. So eventually what happens is the town clerk, a civic official, intervenes, gets the crowd settled down and said, hey, look, people, if you're really concerned about Paul and this Jesus movement, they haven't broken any laws. They haven't done anything. They didn't start a riot. That was y'all. And if there really is something to be concerned about, the courts are open. The pro councils are here. We can handle this through our judicial system. And then that's how the chapter ends. Okay. So kind of anticlimactic. So a lot going on here in chapter 19 and then kind of anticlimactic with just the town clerk saying, hey, we've got a system and a bureaucracy to handle this. And then that's it. Now, that's the end uh, of chapter 19. In 20, Paul continues uh, the journey headed out from Ephesus. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to quote to you words from the great band Sublime, if you remember them from the 1990s. And don't start a riot. All right. Take care, friends. Thanks for watching. Peace.